name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of God our Father, the love of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we recall Christ's ascension to his Father in heaven. Before he left, Jesus promised his disciples that he would be with them always. Indeed, the Lord is with us when we gather in his name, when we listen to the word of God, and as the bread and wine are consecrated. Let us celebrate the assurance that Christ is with us always, now and until the end of time. Lord Jesus, you are the eternal, eternal Son of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your presence fills the universe. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you guide us home with you into bright, into bright glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us praise God together. Glory to Glory God in the highest, and on earth, earth peace, peace to people of goodwill. goodwill. We, we praise you, you we bless you, we adore you, you we, we give you, you. We give give you thanks, thanks for your great glory. glory. Lord, Lord God, God, heavenly King, King O God, God Almighty Father, Father Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving, for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit, to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. 
They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe, in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, to you O Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Before I begin my homily, an important word about the reopening of our parish. You may have read my email last weekend and this yet and yesterday that Cardinal Supich and the Archdiocese of Chicago have laid out a plan for parishes to reopen amid the COVID-19 crisis. This three-phased plan is as follows. Phase one allows for parish parishes to reopen for baptism, reconciliation, weddings, and fun funerals with a limit of 10 attendees. Phase 1A allows for parishes to reopen for private prayer and adoration with a limit of 10 attendees. Phase 2 allows for reopening for weekday and weekend masses for larger groups depending on the guidelines from the state and the capacity of the church building. Our parish reopening plan, first and foremost, it is important for everyone to understand that our efforts will prioritize the safety and well-being of all while maintaining due respect and reverence for the sacraments and the liturgical norms of our faith. I have convened a parish reopening leadership team. We have met twice. We have completed the mandatory training from the Archdiocese to ensure that our parish reopening plan conforms to the guidelines developed by the Archdiocese in collaboration with civil and healthcare authorities. What's the timeline for the reopening of our parish? The next step to, for us is to re re review and complete the tasks assigned to all parishes as part of the reopening certification prof process and be approved by the Archdiocese. By the time you hear this, our plans for phase one will have been submitted and we hope to get a certification some, it, it, soon. So please see the parish website for the latest updates. However, and this is very important, our parish, like all others in the archdiocese, will move forward at a pace and timing appropriate to our own situation. For this to happen, we will need volunteers to assist with various aspects of the parish reopening plan. Importantly, Volunteers must not be part of a vulnerable population. That is, 65 years of age or older with underlying medical conditions such as diabetes or lung disease or undergoing cancer treatment, etc. I ask all of you who are younger than 65 and healthy with no underlying health conditions 
to consider assisting with the reopening of our parish. We will need volunteers to, one, manage the flow of congregants as they enter and exit the church, as well as the reception of Holy Communion. Make sure that those who are attending the services use hand sanitizer, especially when re re before receiving Holy Communion. See that all are wearing a mask and are reminded not to enter if ill. Direct people to appropriate seating and waiting areas. And finally, to help with cleaning if required. The parish reop reopening leadership team and I will make sure that all volunteers are properly tra trained as per the Archdiocesan directives. Please send a message to paul.scamone at QAS Parish to indicate your willingness and ability to volunteer. We will also ask a few from those to step forward and act as volunteer captains and help lead at each of the masses. The guidelines and measures required to reopen are designed to protect our well-being and that of our broader community. Please realize that we are trying to be good Catholic citizens following the norms set by the state and true to our Catholic calling of being pro-life, being concerned about the most vulnerable amongst us. Our collective patience, willingness to help, and the care we take to reopen is a demonstration of our unity and our love for one another. Thank you for listening. And now for the homily. Saying goodbye is a daily fact of life for all of us. I dread the moment when at the end of my visit to my family in India, we gather to pray and say goodbye. There is an uneasy feeling and fear of loss that grips me. I have been through this several times. The first time I said goodbye to come to this country, and when I returned, my father had died. The third time I said goodbye, and by the time I went back, my mother had died. At the end of that visit, my cousin drew me aside and said, I have something to tell you. The last time you were leaving, after you said goodbye, you never turned and looked back. You walked straight to the car and left. They say if you never look back, you will never see those people again. Sounds superstitious. But to this day, after the prayer and goodbye, I repeatedly turn and look back because I fear that I may never see them again. Goodbyes are hard. On this Feast of the Ascension, if we could join the disciples on the hill and watch Jesus ascend, our hearts would ache and be filled with grief. If we could grab onto his garments, we would. We may feel like an abandoned child left to stare at an empty sky. 
we could stand there forever looking up think about your own history of goodbyes do you have a similar story i wonder what the disciples did after they were questioned by the two men dressed in white why are you standing looking at the sky saint luke at the end of the gospel tells us that they returned to the temple and were continually praising god tradition has it that they huddled in fear in the upper room and then pentecost happened during this time i suppose they recall the time they spent with jesus remember the miracles he performed the parables and lessons he gave them his suffering death and resurrection and in their remembering with the aid of the spirit they recorded it and kept the story of our faith alive for us and for those who come after us this weekend we celebrate memorial day remembering all those who have given their today for our tomorrow these days another set of heroes come to the fore doctors nurses and medical personnel who are on the front lines fighting this pandemic they are asked to refrain from hugging their loved ones there are parents working from home who are trying to balance between working and helping their child through e-learning there are a number of them who are making sacrifices so that someone's day may be better than ours we remember them i just want to close with these lines from the play hamilton and when you are gone who remembers your name who keeps your flame who tells your story in our remembering we keep the memory the story alive let us profess our faith together i believe in one god the father almighty maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible i believe in one lord jesus christ the only begotten son of god born of the father before all ages god from god light from light true god from true god begotten not made consubstantial with the father through him all things were made for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the holy spirit was incarnate of the virgin mary and became man for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end i believe in the holy spirit the lord the giver of life who proceeds from the father and the son who with the father and the son is adored and glorified who has spoken to the prophets i believe in one holy catholic and apostolic church i confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and i look forward to the resurrection from the dead and the life of the world to come amen on this joyous day marking jesus christ return to his father in heaven we offer up our needs and the needs of those around us for the church that we continue to carry on the commission christ gave to his first disciples preaching 
teaching, and baptizing throughout all nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all nations lay down their arms and resolve never again to use instruments of death to resolve disagreements and discord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer from systemic persecution, oppression, and discrimination, that justice and righteousness may overcome sin and evil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may be blessed with wisdom and hope, so that we may be effective witnesses in our communities of the joy and consolation of our faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all on the front lines, doctors, nurses, first responders, grocery store workers, those who put their lives at risk in caring for the sick, that the Lord will keep them safe and that they know they do their work with our heartfelt gratitude. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in Illinois, that as we begin to move towards phased reopening, we will always follow the Cardinal's call to practice faithful citizenship, that our reverence for life and human dignity will cause us to always act in the interest of protecting the health and well-being of others, especially the most vulnerable to this virus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in service of their country during this war against the pandemic and all past wars, that they will be remembered again with our gratitude. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer from COVID-19 and all serious illnesses, especially all the sick of our parish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all our brothers and sisters who have passed, especially John Tedeschi, father of Paul Tedeschi, Joan Reese, mother of Carol Tomaselli, Michael Nigliazzo, Lisa Marie Erzo, and those who have died alone and in silence due to this pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God in heaven, you raised up your son who now sits at your right hand in glory. Listen to the prayers we make here on earth and grant them through your son who is Lord forever and ever. and brothers that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name. 
for our good, good and the good, good of all his holy, holy church. church. We offer the sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, the conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. And therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Blaise our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Queen of all Saints, with Blessed Joseph, a spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the Saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, the power and, and the glory, glory are yours, now and forever. And forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace to all of you at home, from all of us here at Queen of All Saints. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that you, that you should, should enter, enter under my roof, but, but only say, say the word, word and my soul shall, shall be healed. I pray your peace.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who allowed those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Don't miss out on the next early bird drawing prize of $500. Congratulations to Mary Beth Parton, who is now $500 richer because she bought her tickets early. Get your United Parish Program raffle tickets today. As you know, this one parish annual fundraiser is crucial to meeting our operating budget and supporting all of our ministries and outreach. We truly need everyone's support. Get your tickets today and help us reach our goal of 3,500 raffle tickets sold. Additional cash prizes will kick in when we meet the goal. No amount of participation is too small. Sponsorships are also available and a great way to support UPP. Please visit the parish website, qasparish.org for information and to purchase tickets and sponsorships. Raffle tickets are also available at the front door of the rectory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look down upon you and give you his peace. And may Almighty God bless us the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us go with the joy and the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Now a blessed weekend, everyone.